In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create freeform quiz questions using Articulate Storyline. A great feature in Storyline is the ability to take a slide with content and quickly convert that to a freeform quiz question. In this particular example, we built out the slide, so we have the refrigerator, we have some food items, and then when we do the convert to freeform, we can make these food items selectable objects as part of an assessment. So you can see I can make my selections, I hit submit, and I get my feedback. In a previous tutorial, we looked at how to create a drag and drop interaction with freeforms, but if we review this, we see we've got objects on a screen, we do the convert to freeform, and now what were just pictures have become draggable objects that can be part of an assessment, and again, I have the submit feature, and I get my feedback. So let's take a look and see how Storyline makes converting slides into interactive quiz questions super easy. We'll start with this drag and drop interaction that we reviewed in an earlier tutorial. Right now we have a slide, and the slide has some objects on it. So there are four pictures here, and there's a picture here. What we want to do is convert this so that these are draggable objects that we can place in the box. Uh, before we do the conversion, let's do a few things. First, let's review what we have over here on the slide layers. Right now we can see that all we have are our base layer and no other layers. And if we look at the triggers, we have the default previous next button triggers. What we want to do now is do the convert to free form. So we want these to be draggable, and then we need a drop target. In this case, we'll use a hotspot to create a drop target in the center of the box. So this way everything kind of lines up in there. So let's go to insert. We're going to choose our controls, and we'll just use a hotspot. And the reason I like using a hotspot is because it's an invisible shape. We've got our hotspot here. Now the hotspots come with trigger, so we're just going to delete this because we don't need the trigger. We're also going to open the timeline, and we'll just call this our target. And let's now do our conversion. So we're going to go up to Insert, Convert to Freeform. And you can see we have a number of choices. For this one, we'll choose Drag and Drop. Hit OK. And we have a form, and the form is going to allow us to determine what do we want to make draggable, since this is a drag and drop interaction, and then what's the correct drop target for that draggable object. And then down here we have our feedback, and we'll just keep everything as a default feedback. But you can always click in here and customize it, or click the More button and you can add additional feedback. And then over here we notice we've got a thumbnail that gives us a preview of the slide, and then we have the form view and slide view, so we can always toggle between form view and slide view based on the editing needs that we have. So let's determine what do we want to make draggable. In this case, it's going to be all of these objects here. And you can see over here on the side, it'll show you what you're selecting. So we know the flashlights, the hot dogs, the radio, and the water are going to be our draggable objects. And then the target is going to be the hotspot that we title target. So we'll do that. Now we know that the hot dogs are going to be none, so we don't want that in the box. And we want the other ones in the target. And that quickly we've created a drag and drop interaction. So we've determined what do we want to make draggable and what are the appropriate drop targets. Now if you want to do more editing, you can do that up here. For example, you can shuffle the answers, which we'll do. So that means these answer choices will always move around. If you want to determine the scoring or number of attempts, you can do that as well. And then, of course, there's some drag and drop options up here. For right now, we're just going to keep this as a default. And let's preview and see what we have. And here's our interaction. What were at one point static images, now are draggable images. And then I can hit submit and I get my feedback. Very simple. Let's go ahead and look at what Storyline created. If we come back to Slide View, You'll notice that the triggers change from uh, previous next button triggers to the submit trigger because it's anticipating the quiz question. And you also have correct and incorrect feedback layers. And these layers are just like any other layers that you would have in Storyline, so you can edit those and do whatever you want to. If you want to edit the master layer file, just go up to View, Slide Masters, and there's your Feedback Master. And you can edit that to fit your organization's branding requirements or to match the look and feel of your current course. So that's how we do a drag and drop interaction. Let's go ahead and do one of the other convert to free forms. So we've got this demo file here. 
on this particular slide we're going to do a convert to free form. So what do we need to do? First we look at our slide and we can see these are just objects on the screen. So it's just a picture and these are just pictures. And what we want to do is a convert to free form and make these selectable objects. Again if we look over at the base layer there's only one layer. And if we look at our triggers we have the previous next button triggers. So now let's do our conversion. So we'll go to insert, convert to free form. Now in the previous one we did drag and drop. In this one we're going to do a pick many. So that means I can pick more than one. So I'll select that. Hit OK. And now in this case the form's a little bit different. I'm just going to select everything that I want to make selectable which is going to be the food items. So we'll select all of the food items. And again if you look at the thumbnail you'll notice that I'm highlight I can highlight those objects that I'm rolling over. So I know I'm selecting the right things. So we'll select all the food items. And now we'll determine which ones are correct answers. So we'll say we'll put the ice cream in the fridge. We'll put the grapes in the fridge. And we'll put the avocados in the fridge. So we've got our objects. We've determined which ones we want to make selectable. We've got our feedback here just like in the other ones. And then we can toggle between form view and slide view. Let's go to slide view. And again you'll notice that Storyline created a submit trigger instead of the previous next button. And I also have the correct incorrect feedback layers. So let's preview this. Now what was a static slide is a slide where we can make multiple selections. Now you may not notice this but there's a slight glow on here. So as I'm selecting it it's indicating that it's being selected. So I may want to change that. Let's uh, see how that works. So when I open up my timeline and I go to the States tab, when I select one of these objects, for example the pie, you'll notice that it created a selected state and the selected state has a glow on it. I can double click on that state and now I'm in an edit state mode and I can edit this state to look any way I want to. In this case I may just want the glow to be a different color because the blue doesn't work with the blue background. So all I have to do is go to Format. And we'll choose our picture effects and we'll choose glow. And I'm going to choose this really big orange type of glow. And that'll be a nice contrast to the um, blue background. So I'll hit Done Editing States. Now I have to do that for all the other objects. But I can go up to Home, choose Format Painter, and I'll double click it. That keeps it active. And now I can just select the other fruit. And you can see that it's drawing the orange glow there. All right, now let's preview this. And we have our updated select states and I can submit and I get my feedback. And the feedback here comes from those slide layers that Storyline built by default. If you don't want this gray box or you want a custom look, you can go ahead and go into the slide layers and make it look any way you want to. Once you do the convert to free form, you're working on the slide just like you would any other slide. And of course you can apply other triggers and do other things to enhance the interactivity. But as you can see the convert to freeform is a pretty simple process. Let's look at one more demo based on the quiz question tutorial we did earlier. Earlier we did this interaction where we took the quiz question and converted it to a question like this. Now in this case because I can do the convert to freeform, I don't even need the text based information. So what we're going to do to fix this is we're just going to delete all of this. So we delete our question information. And now we can just come up here do the convert to free form. Choose the pick one. Hit OK. Which ones do I want to make pickable? So we'll just say Adams, Jefferson, Washington. What's the correct choice? Washington. We'll keep all of this default information. Let's preview this. And now we have a pick one question. Again, you can see how easy the convert to freeform process is and how flexible it is as well. And for you when you build your courses, you can now take anything that's on a slide and make it part of your assessment and build all sorts of interactivity. Now it's just a matter of you taking these practice files, practicing it and applying it to your next e-learning course.